Ah, oh, sweet. All right. Hello, my name is Wade Shepard from VagabondJourney.com, and I'm interviewing Ben and Solomon today, who are traveling engineers. Um, and could you guys uh, tell us a little bit about what you do? So, what do we do here? Um, we're building an elevator. This is the Bailong Elevator in Changzhou. It's uh, 326 meters tall, uh, five meters per second. Uh, capacity is 4.9 tons. So it's got a really big mm -hmm. elevator. It goes up the side of a mountain. Yeah, it's, kind of, it's kind of like a tourist elevator that has, uh, it goes way up the side of the mountains and there's like nice windows on the outside and tourists can go up and like take pictures of, uh, I don't know, the mountains and stuff. But, um, so you guys just uh, travel around the world taking on various engineering projects? Yeah, yeah, we've had, um, we had a project in uh, Dubai a little while ago building some uh, elevators in a hotel. There was one in, uh, Korea, not that long back. Uh, maybe a couple months we'll have another one in China, in uh, Wuhan, and uh, Austria is also coming up. Mm -hmm. so. And how about you? Were you working on all these projects? Or? No, no. I joined this company as an intern mm -hmm. a month ago. So I have been here on the, uh, on the mountain in Zhangjie for a month now, and I'll be here about another three months. And after I'm done with this project, I'll be going to Japan to do mm -hmm. some interior modeling. Mm -hmm. um, my projects are very dissimilar and similar at the same time. Because I studied in mathematics, I do a lot of uh, designing projects, and it's not specifically in one section of engineering. Mm -hmm. So it depends. Okay. Um, and I look for contracts uh -huh. when one ends. <laughs> yeah, so basically you guys are our contractors, right? So you just travel around taking on various contracts with uh, different companies in different places? Right. Or you work with we, like, no, we have a we have a, a, a parent company, a, a German design firm, and uh, that designs elevators, and like they make a very like a special type of elevator. And so there's you know various places around the world. If somebody wants a very unique, very different elevator, they'll come to our company. So uh -huh. our German company, at least, and we're just like the Chinese branch of it that do mm -hmm. the the installations here. Mm -hmm. And um, when you got into this work, did you do so with the idea that you were going to be traveling very often? Uh, yeah, kind of yeah. Of... I guess it's kind of it's kind of the, the name of the game. Like <clears throat> you gotta like wherever the elevator is, you gotta build it. So there's uh -huh. you know inherent to the trip, you know, travel. You gotta go to the site to build the elevator. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And um, around how long do you stay in each place? Well, Roughly. this is you know. You can build, it depends on the elevator, I mean you can build a standard elevator in three, four weeks, no problem, you know, like five, six story elevator, but this is a giant, this is like a massive mm -hmm. elevator, so we've been here for about, uh, about six months, I guess, close to six months, there was a gap of a month where we had some like, we had to take a break for a while because of like permits and whatnot, but mm -hmm. yeah, so this is... Uh, if it's something this big, a big giant elevator, six months. Uh -huh. Little elevator, four or five weeks. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So you guys get to come into um, new countries and, and meet new people and, and learn about the, the local culture Definitely. and stuff like that. You guys like that? You like that aspect of the job? I mean, it's <laughs> it can be fun. I mean, you get, I mean, culture is one of those things where, you know, there's good and there's bad of every culture. So mm -hmm. it's fun experiencing it. It's fun mm -hmm. seeing the new things. There are, you know, there's... There's good parts, there's bad parts, but yeah, yeah. I guess it's an adventure. Mm -hmm. it's an yeah, adventure. And, and like working abroad, that's probably one of the best ways to like really integrate in with the, in with the communities that you're, you're living with because you're, you're actually working on projects with people and different cultures in the world have different ways of doing things, right? And how, how has your experience been in China um, working on like, like projects with, within, within Chinese culture? So like culturally speaking, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you see a lot of similarities. I mean, people, you know, you know, people are kind of the same. They don't, you don't want to work some days, you know, if it's raining, you don't want to go out and work, like, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. People get frustrated, get upset, the emotions and all are the same, but in terms of culturally different, I don't know. Mm -hmm. The, uh, it's not coming to me, I guess. Uh, but, <laughs> well, I guess in your case, you've been living in Southeast Asia for close to five years now. This is the second time I am in China. The first time I came was last year, and it was a big cultural shock for mm -hmm. me. I had to learn the language as fast as I could because I was traveling alone. 
and I am still learning as I go. But I definitely enjoyed my experience, and that's why I came back to China. Mm -hmm. And I might be coming back again. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, so how did you guys get into this work? Well, I initially went through an intern company called Intern China, and his uh, the manager of this company called Chris Huber. Uh, decided to interview me and I got in mm -hmm. to the company via that process. Okay. okay. I was like, I was teaching English in Taiwan and like one of my old buddies was just like, uh, he got a job at this company. He's like, you know, calls me up for some kind of email. He's like, hey, do you think you could build an elevator? And I was like, yeah, I could build an elevator, no problem. And then like, yeah, I just came over and started, you know, building the elevator. So. What's your educational background? Um, I studied, I a four year degree in the USA. I majored in math and French. Mm -hmm. So. Uh huh. So it's just kind of fall into it. Huh? Yeah, I kind of fall into it. <laughs> that's, that's how these things usually work. Um, okay, and um, if someone wanted to um, to would have the idea of like traveling and want to make a living as they travel the world uh, perpetually or, or permanently, would you say that and being an engineer, studying engineering, is a good way to go? Um, I I could. I mean, yeah, yeah. That could. I mean. I don't know, I guess I don't know about the different types of engineering well enough, but I could imagine it definitely could be a good way. Because there's a demand, there's definitely a demand. People, they really like having foreign engineers coming here, they like having foreign engineers doing things. We present a good, you know, face for their business, and so they're like, you know, they want us to be here. And so, and we can provide, you know, technology, they love technology, they love, you know, technology information and stuff. So, yeah, they want, they want us to come here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure there is definitely one where you could, you know, a type of engineering where you could just go from place to place to place mm -hmm. and just travel around and do that type of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, that's, uh, that's pretty good. So how much free time do you have? How much time do you have to like, <laughs> travel around the country or even between projects? How much time do you have like for yourself to just go out and like see the places that you're so, actually in? So in terms of free time, there's time between projects yeah. when it's like, you know, pretty free depending upon what your job is, but you can be pretty free. You can do what you want. Once the project is going, though, mm -hmm. it is all in doing the project. Yeah. Like there is very little free time. This is, you know, a, you know, a, a job that takes a lot of hours every single day. Like, mm -hmm. you know, this type of thing. Like, if we're not here, you know, work slows down, work stops. You got to have mm -hmm. constant, yeah. constant eye on what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, and between projects, do you guys go home or do you do you stay abroad? I, for the. Near the completion of this project, I will be staying in China because I have to go to Japan. It doesn't make much sense to go to Canada for two weeks and come back to Japan mm -hmm. when I'm already in China. But usually if the gap is longer, then I definitely go back home because okay. I miss home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and home for you now is Canada. It's Canada. And Ben is from Michigan. Um, Okay, guys. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you for doing an interview. I'm here with uh, Ben and Salman, who are traveling uh, engineers, and we are in um, Wuling Yuan, uh, Hunan province of China. Uh, I'm Wade Shepard, VagabondJourney.com. Thanks for watching.